Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent and, I guess, somewhat unusual discoveries coming from the iconic Andromeda Galaxy. And in this case, discoveries highlighting its ancient history, discoveries about its central region and its supermassive black hole, and much more importantly, a discovery of several very bizarre dwarf galaxies that we've never seen before anywhere that seem to be around Andromeda as well. And so let's discuss some of these discoveries in more detail, with all of the studies in the description explaining even more, but I guess here let's first highlight some of the historical significances when it comes to this galaxy. And that's because pretty much exactly a century ago, it was Edwin Hubble that finally established that this is indeed an actual galaxy relatively far away from us, and not some kind of a nebula inside the Milky Way. You can learn about this concept in one of the videos in the description, but basically in 1925, Edwin Hubble officially discovered the entire universe. And he did this by calculating the exact distance to this galaxy through the observations of stars referred to as Cepheid variables. But now, basically, 100 years later, by literally using the telescope named after him, the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers are able to do way, way more. As a matter of fact, the Hubble Space Telescope team recently released this video, basically showing us the largest survey of all stars in this galaxy, that took a really long time to compile. And here we actually see approximately 200 million stars in a lot of detail, mostly focusing on stars that are brighter than our sun, because a lot of dimmer stars, such as red dwarfs, are actually kind of difficult to see. And this enormous mosaic took more than a decade to complete. So this is actually an incredible achievement, finally completed 100 years after Hubble, here we're talking about the person, not the telescope, used some of his first observations to basically open up the universe for all of us. But here this is not just a picture, this also shows us quite a lot about this galaxy and about its evolution. Specifically, it confirms that both the Milky Way and the Andromeda seem to have had slightly different evolutionary histories. And so despite being neighbors, both galaxies seem to have experienced different events. And strangely enough, some of the recent observations discovered that Andromeda seems to be actually very populated with younger stars and contains a lot of different streams of stars from previous collisions, suggesting a very active and somewhat recent star formation compared to the Milky Way. Here, scientists even refer to this galaxy as a kind of a train wreck, mostly because of the amount of collisions it seems to have experienced in the past, with one event potentially being extremely powerful. We'll discuss this in a few seconds when we talk about dwarf galaxies. And so here, some of the observations imply that a lot of different stars formed around the same time, and actually relatively recently, just to then completely stop and shut down the entire galaxy, where there is now practically no star formation at all. Moreover, everything in the Andromeda seems to be kind of asymmetric and highly disturbed, as if something really major happened here not so long ago. As a matter of fact, compared to the Milky Way and a lot of other spiral galaxies that basically have their arms and are usually relatively symmetrical, here the Andromeda actually resembles some kind of a transitional galaxy, somewhere in between a star-forming spiral and some kind of an elliptical galaxy that very often contains ancient stars. And so here, by observing the motion of stars, it becomes possible to discover the so-called galactic immigration, or basically the motion of stars across the galaxy in order to see what potentially happened in the past. In one of the recent studies, this was achieved using 7,500 different stars you see behind me, and this basically shows us how many stars here actually form these huge structures, which resulted from a previous merger, which basically confirms that both the Andromeda and the Milky Way seem to have experienced at least one major collision in the past. For the Milky Way galaxy, you can find out about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but for the Andromeda, it's still actually unknown exactly what happened. But what's visible here is that the inner halo of both galaxies seems to be basically dominated by this single event. But the most likely culprit is this smaller galaxy you see right here, Messier 32, a satellite of the Andromeda that seems to resemble a rare compact elliptical galaxy, and that seems to be the remnant of that previous collision billions of years ago. You can actually see the Andromeda and M32 right next to each other in this image right here. And M32 is basically some kind of a stripped-down core of a possible spiral galaxy that used to exist billions of years ago. And because the Andromeda and the M32 galaxies potentially had an extremely powerful collision, it essentially reshaped both of them. But normally, when galaxies collide, 
We also expect a lot of activity in the center, such as the activity from the central black hole. But in this case, for both the Milky Way and the Andromeda, because it happened such a long time ago, we don't really see much. Or at least we didn't see much until some of the recent observations. Here this was achieved using the infrared Spitzer Space Telescope, which was able to image very bizarre streams, dust streams, that seem to actually point toward the central black hole. And in this case, by using modeling and simulations, here they were also able to confirm a really intriguing hypothesis about central black holes. And that's because not all black holes produce a lot of emissions, not all of them are active, but many of them still feed. And so some massive black holes can actually feed continuously without producing any flashes or any flares, and by basically just producing constant brightness. And so here the hypothesis was that quiet supermassive black holes can actually feed on a steady stream of gas, which produces constant brightness and makes them kind of difficult to detect. Because in some sense they actually basically appear like a typical star. And so by using computer modeling and by simulating how gas would act in the proximity of a certain supermassive black hole, the simulations show that there should be a relatively small disk of hot gas that would allow this black hole to feed continuously and to thus grow as well. But more importantly, these streams would very likely have an extremely specific size and rate of flow, because otherwise the black hole would actually start producing a lot of flares, which would be visible through various X-ray flares detectable by modern telescopes. Now since nothing like this has been seen so far, here the researchers decided to compare their models to sound observations from the Spitzer Space Telescope, which helped them discover these unusual dust spirals that though previously seen have never really been connected to the black hole. But this was exactly what their model predicted. Basically here these unusual spirals seem to be feeding the Andromeda's supermassive black hole at a constant rate which prevents it from flaring up and from becoming active. Now nothing like this has been seen in previous galaxies and it looks like the Milky Way galaxy doesn't seem to have this either, so this is actually a really intriguing discovery, although this is predicted to exist around many different galaxies. But this once again highlights the differences between the Milky Way and the Andromeda, and there's actually another main difference. Even though this is a spiral galaxy, it's actually mostly dominated by this enormous ring of dust. Its spiral arms seem to not exist. It's actually a little bit easier to see when you compare the images side by side, but basically here this once again suggests something really bizarre in the Andromeda's past. But because there seems to be a hole inside the galaxy, or basically the ring contains a hole as if something shot through it, this almost definitively confirms that this was a collision with a small galaxy, which very likely reshaped the Andromeda back in the days. But this bizarre collision potentially created something else, something researchers have trouble explaining. And here this discovery is in regards to the satellite galaxies, many of which have been possibly influenced by this collision as well, or possibly represent the remnants from this collision, even though there is one thing that's super difficult to explain. For some reason, out of nearly 40 satellites here, half of them seem to be in exactly the same plane. Or basically they all seem to be around the same inclination and also orbit in the same direction. Now this is not supposed to happen and most of them should be in random locations, but for some unknown reasons that are still difficult to explain, half of them seem to be somehow related. Now this could be the result of that massive collision, which basically left a lot of remnants, or essentially maybe this is just remnants of a larger galaxy, but at this point it's obviously not known. And because this is such a bizarre mystery, for many years now scientists have been trying to discover even more of these Andromeda satellites, just to see if we can actually trace back their motion and find out what actually happened here. And well, in some of the recent studies, scientists did actually discover something they once again did not expect what seems to be the smallest galaxy ever seen. And so let's talk about these new dwarf galaxies that we just discovered not so long ago. Now because of the power of modern telescopes and because of new techniques in discovering a lot of extremely dim objects, it's now possible to find galaxies that don't actually even look like galaxies. For example, not so long ago, we've discussed the concept of ultra-faint dwarf galaxies, galaxies that are barely visible and that very often resemble just some kind of a patch, but that are still galaxies where stars are orbiting around the center and where there is a lot of dust in the middle. And for many years scientists always suspected that Andromeda is very likely surrounded by these extremely faint galaxies, with some of them potentially just a few hundred light years across. As a matter of fact, some of the previous models predicted up to about 500 galaxies that obviously have not been discovered yet, but that have been predicted by various dark matter models. 
And recently we've discussed some of the more bizarre discoveries around our own galaxy that do actually seem to suggest even the Milky Way has a lot of these galaxies everywhere. Now only six were discovered, but they were actually found in an extremely small patch of night skies, implying that there are probably 500 more in the vicinity. And so something similar was expected for Andromeda. And the first galaxy that was confirmed officially was Pegasus 7. This was discovered using ultraviolet observations, and it's barely visible right here. Now this is about 1 million light years away from the Andromeda, so it's not really that close, but because it's slightly elongated, it potentially interacted with the Andromeda in the past. This was found back in February of 2025, and a thousand light years across, this was basically one of the faintest dwarf galaxies ever discovered. It was definitely the faintest around the Andromeda. But this is a really tiny galaxy, only 26,000 solar masses, and barely visible because it no longer produces any stars. This galaxy is very likely at least 10 billion years old. And so here we had our first hint of these barely visible hidden galaxies, which in some sense kind of support these dark matter theories and various predictions about hundreds of such galaxies around the Andromeda, but we needed to have more clues. And it looks like now, just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, scientists discovered another one that beats all records. This was reported in the study by Jose Marco Arias and his team, but here they found the smallest and the dimmest galaxy ever. The galaxy that's supposed to be visible right here, although ignore some of the brighter stars here because these are actually much closer to us. And compared to all of the other discoveries, including this Pegasus 7, here this really makes no sense. Now this is just a little bit less massive at 20,000 solar masses, but intriguingly this galaxy was potentially forming stars in somewhat recent times, just a few billion years ago. Now first of all, this galaxy is just a little bit less massive than Pegasus 7, 20,000 solar masses, approximately 173 light years in radius, and just a little bit larger than a typical globular cluster. But unlike globular clusters, this one is extremely dim. But when you compare this to a typical galaxy, this is really extreme. It's about one millionth of the size of the Milky Way and barely produces any light. And from what we see so far, it seems to be some kind of an elliptical metal poor system, but a galaxy that potentially experienced several events, several star forming events, because here the stars seem to be of different age. Now some of the youngest stars are very similar in age to our sun, so just over 5 billion years old. There are no younger stars here, and no star formation right now, but this is still very different from other satellite galaxies, and definitely something that's difficult to explain. And so this new galaxy, currently referred to as Andromeda 35, seems to present a bit of a problem for modern cosmological theories. And that's because galaxies this small should not even exist. But the reason why is a little bit more difficult to explain. It's basically the result of the period we refer to as reionization. In essence, the period billions of years ago, when a lot of dwarf galaxies and a lot of super bright stars suddenly started to change the whole universe as they started emitting a lot of powerful light that changed neutral hydrogen into ionized hydrogen. You can learn about this concept in one of the videos in the description. And during this time, a lot of research always suggested that smaller objects, specifically smaller galaxies, should have been destroyed completely because a lot of this light from various powerful stars would have produced so much energy that it would have stripped a lot of these smaller objects of any gas, basically killing them in the process. And so only larger galaxies should have been able to survive. And this is actually what we see in a lot of the world galaxies around the Milky Way as well. Quite a lot of smaller galaxies seem to have stopped star formation approximately 10 billion years ago, very likely when a lot of their gas basically disappeared, possibly the result of reionization. This is also what's detected in that previously mentioned Pegasus 7 Galaxy 2. Yet here something really doesn't add up, because it shows star formation from at least 6 billion years ago, implying that somehow this galaxy was not affected and was still able to produce stars much much later. So technically this galaxy really shouldn't exist, yet because it does, it once again confirms some kind of a problem we have with modern ideas about galactic formation and galactic evolution. But this galaxy also confirms a major difference between the Andromeda and the Milky Way when it comes to various historical events which we're still trying to discover. But because right now this is the faintest and the most compact galaxy ever seen, this is also going to very likely redefine what we actually believe about galaxies and how we define them. And so lots of different exciting discoveries from the Andromeda and quite a few of them that kind of make no sense. Which means that we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some explanations. 
Until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.